Hello, and welcome back to a very special edition of A Quick Look. I'm Zoe Jewell, and today I'm going to be breaking down the track list for Taylor Swift's forthcoming album, The Tortured Poets Department. And yes, I am wearing my Taylor Swift t-shirt. I am prepared for this moment, so let's get into it. Okay, we've had a couple of weeks since the track list was announced to digest the song titles, the features that are gonna be on the album, to speculate about what we think the songs may be about. So what I'm gonna do today is go through each of the track lists, or, or, or sorry, go through each title of the track list, discuss what I think the song may be about, discuss if there's a feature on it, what the feature may mean for what the song will sound like. We'll just kind of break it down. Now, before we get into it, I do think it's important to preface all this by saying that this is all speculation, right? None of us know what these songs are going to be about. None of us know what they're going to sound like. We're all just speculating over here. But that's part of the fun of being a Taylor Swift fan is the speculation of the Easter eggs, the secret signs that she sort of leaves us that help us to figure out what these songs, what the album may be about. Okay, so clearly this album, I think, is going to be about Taylor's breakup from Joe Alwyn, which happened last year, I, it was announced in the spring, though we don't actually know when they technically broke up. But judging from the track listing and judging from what Taylor's been saying about the album and kind of inferring from what she's told us, it's it's going to be a album about her processing the breakup. Will we maybe get songs about her new relationship with Travis? Potentially, I think we'll get into some of that, but I think it's pretty safe to say Again, we don't have confirmation. I don't think we'll ever get confirmation, but I think it's pretty safe to say that this will be a breakup album, at least to some degree. All right, let's just get into it. Starting off with the very first song on the album called Fortnite featuring Post Malone. Now, the addition of Post Malone already kind of tells me what the song is gonna be. I think, I think this whole album is going to stay in the sort of pop, synth pop world that she's been, been in for the last few years, especially after Midnight. I think it's going to be a continuation of that sound. I don't know that we're gonna get something super experimental or different. I think it's, we might get some songs that are slightly different, but I think for the most part, the album will will still be in that pop Jack Antonoff style that we've come accustomed to with Taylor Swift and honestly is very good. She's very good at writing great pop songs. So I think we're gonna stay in that sort of genre, but the addition of Post Malone, as I said, makes me think we might get a little more, edgy's potentially the wrong word, but something a little different there. Um, Fortnite, obviously, it, that means two weeks. That's a word to describe two weeks. So this could be talking about a period of two weeks in Taylor's life. Maybe she's trying to figure out something in these two weeks. Maybe she's away for, for, from somebody for these two weeks. It's an interesting word choice, honestly, Fortnite. And it's an interesting word to have in a song but I'm excited about it. And Taylor typically kind of, I feel like in most of her albums, the first song sets the tone for the rest of the album. I think that's how most artists do it when they're creating their track list. But I think sonically and sort of thematically, it, it lays the foundation for the rest of the album. And so I think whatever we get, again, story-wise and then just like song-wise, sonically, I think will determine kind of what we're in for for the rest of the album. But I'm very curious about this and I'm very curious, I'm very excited for the Post Malone part because I think he's great. I think he makes great music, catchy songs. And I think it's a fun, different feature for Taylor um, than what she's done in the past. Okay, moving on to track two, which is the title track 
the tortured poets department. Now, Taylor's not afraid to have a longer song title or to have a title that maybe doesn't really make sense or that you wouldn't think would work as a song title. It's hard to imagine a, her singing the words, the tortured poets department. I'm curious. Obviously, there's been a lot of speculation about the fact that Joe Alwyn revealed in a interview he did with actor Paul Meskel. They did like a, the uh, actors on actors sit down interview. And they revealed in that interview that they have a group chat called, I think it's like the tortured men's department or like the tortured man club or something like that. And so people think it's like this song title and the album as a whole is like a sort of a dig at that. So I, I could see it being a play off of that situation with Joe. I don't know. This one's kind of stumped me. I could also see this being like a fictional song, like a song that she's, she's telling a story about a group of people that aren't necessarily real. And it's because as we know too, like in her past albums and past songwriting, I'm thinking of like the last great American dynasty, right? Like that was a song about the woman who owned her home in Rhode Island before she did. And she was telling the story of this woman throughout the song. I could see this being like very much a story type of song um, with like a start and end type of thing. I don't know. This one's kind of stumped me. But I'm very curious. This is probably the song that I'm like most curious about. And the fact that she chose to name the album Torture Poets Department makes me think there's there's something really there that we that's going to stick, if that makes sense. Moving on, track three. My boy only breaks his favorite toys. This is interesting. Again, another long title. She's really going in with the long titles hard to imagine it's 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 a mouthful my boy only breaks his favorite toys that's that's a lot to say and that's a lot for a title so i'm intrigued it makes me think of like a child throwing a tantrum and they're just like tossing out all of their favorite toys from their bin or something and just whining and crying so a part of me wonders is this a song about somebody throwing a tantrum maybe I don't know. This one's interesting as well. They're all interesting, let's be honest. Um, but this could be like a bit of a knife um, in the back. Like this, this feels like it. It could be. It could be tough if um, if it's about who we think it might be about. All right, number four, down bad. Now this is the song that I sort of have convinced myself is going to be about Travis Kelsey. Because down bad, it's obviously a phrase people use when they're really into somebody. Like, oh, he's down bad for her, right? And I think because obviously this, this album had to be finished. I mean, we don't know when she officially wrapped writing it and stuff. But we have to imagine that she probably worked on, on it through the end of last year. So there was probably a time frame, a few month period of time where she was dating Travis and she was still working on this album. And I could see this being like a song about the early parts of their relationship, like the fact that she chose to go to a Chiefs game one month into them dating. I'm putting my money on this being the, the Travis Kelsey song. I could be totally wrong about this, but that's what I'm thinking. And I'm also feeling it's gonna be a little bit just like R&B, a little more like sensual of a song perhaps. But um, yeah, we'll have to see if it's about Travis. I could be totally off base, but I guess we'll find out. Okay, track five. If you know anything about Taylor Swift, track five is, is the most important track of them all. This is, the, this is the one, and she's said this in the past, that her track five is like the most sort of intense, personal, heartbreaking, heart-wrenching song on the album. And it's All Too Well was a track five song. Um, Dear John was a track five song. 
they're, they're just they're just the ones that just cut a little deep. And this one is called So Long London. I mean, it's pretty obvious what this song is about. Obviously, Joe Alwyn, British, lives in London. Taylor has written songs before about London, famously has a song called London Boy, about how she's in love with a London boy. And this is clearly a song about like, see you later, like this is the breakup song. This is the breakup song. Um, probably about her having to say goodbye to, I mean, I'm sure obviously she's gonna go back to London. She's playing concerts there. She's gonna, you know, visit there and do press there and stuff over the course of her career. But I think it's more like metaphorically speaking, she is saying goodbye to this person that she was with for over six years. So I think this is going to be emotional. I think that I, and, and I could see it being not necessarily all too well adjacent, but I could see it being as heart wrenching as like intense as all too well as dear John. I'm looking forward to this one. Okay. But Daddy, I Love Him is track six. This is interesting because I think you could go two ways. I could see this being a song about maybe Taylor's family having some reservations about her relationship with Joe and Taylor being like, well, I still love him, even though maybe I know in my heart it's not right. This is also... In reference, people have brought this up. This is in reference to the Little Mermaid when Ariel says that to King Triton, her her dad. Um, so it could maybe be some sort of Disney Little Mermaid nod, perhaps. I don't know. Title is interesting. I'm curious. I want I want to know more. All right, track seven, fresh out the slammer. This one is interesting because Taylor has talked a lot about how she's felt like the last six years of her life or the six years that she was in a relationship, it she felt like she was kind of locked away. Now, part of that was the fact that she was dealing with, and part of that was also voluntary. Like after the whole Kim Kardashian, Kanye West thing, she got herself out of the spotlight. She went into hiding, essentially. She didn't really show her face. She just went off the grid, basically. And she's talked about how those that time in her life and those six years and part of that also was the pandemic, but that she, she really was like locked away and we never really saw her out in public. She wasn't really, she wasn't going out to dinner with her friends as much. She wasn't like living her life in the public eye. She was maybe out occasionally here and there doing press for albums or whatnot. But for the most part, she was, she, she was away. And she even mentioned in her time magazine interview when she was time person of the year, that she kind of regrets that part of her life and that she she knows that she'll never get that time back. I think this song title is a direct nod to, to that. Like she's free, she's out of the slammer essentially, and she's going to live her life. I think this is gonna be kind of like a, not girl power song, but like I'm I'm free, I'm, I'm out and about, I'm having fun, I'm living my life, like I'm no longer, locked away and living this private life that I've lived for six years. I just had a thought and I want to circle back. The but daddy I love him thing, maybe potentially Maddie Healy could be about him. That just came into my head. I don't know if that's true because I don't know if she actually ever loved him. But just I want to put that out there in case maybe that ends up being true. Okay, next track, Florida with three exclamation points. I think that might be meaningful. I don't know featuring Florence and the Machine. Okay, again, the Florence and the Machine edition, I'm already thinking about what the song will sound like. The reason I think it's called Florida, or what I think it could be about, is she played her very first shows following the announcement of her breakup in Florida, in Tampa, I believe. So I'm wondering if it has something to do with like that portion of time when now it's public knowledge and people know... I don't know. It's also like Florida with the exclamation points. So like, I don't know exactly what that means. This one's interesting. This, one, this one's interesting, but I, 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 I do think the fact that she played her first shows in Florida after the breakup, that might be what it's about. 
Okay, moving on. Guilty as sin? Question mark. Guilty as sin? This one has stumped me. I don't, I don't really have any guesses as to what it's about. I don't really have any guesses as to what it will sound like. I, I don't know. Like it's, it's a hard one, honestly, to like pin down. Um, I know that's not very exciting because I can't, I don't really have much to say about it, but, and th th this could maybe be another Travis song. We'll see. Um, okay. Number 10, who's afraid of little old me? This one, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what I think it might be about. And I can't quite get there. She's referenced in the past, like an anti-hero about how she feels like a monster on the hill. She feels like she's this big, like her, her presence is so large and looms so large over everybody else that like, she can't just be a normal person and can't live a normal life. And let's, it's like everything she does, every move she makes, it's like so big. And so, um, I don't know, just like, she can't just be a normal person person, which we all know that. And so the fact that she says, um, who's afraid of little old me, I don't know if that's like a play off of that part of it. Again, an, an, another one that's kind of stumped me. I, I'll, I'd be curious to know what you guys think that song will be about because I can't, I can't quite figure it out. Moving on, track 11, I can fix him. No, really, I can. Okay. I know I mentioned Maddie Healy before. I could see this being the Maddie Healy song. For those who maybe don't know, Taylor, after, after her breakup with Joe, she dated, hung out with Maddie Healy, the lead singer of the 1975 for like a month, a couple, I mean, we don't know exactly how long, but a month, two months. And it was just kind of this weird whirlwind romance type of thing. It started, it ended very quickly. And, you know, Matty Healy is, he's, I don't want to say he's problematic. I think some people would say he's problematic, but he's definitely like, he's a questionable person. People have very different feelings about him. Some people love him. Some people hate him. He's kind of a bad boy. He's edgy, all this stuff. And the, I can fix him. No, really, I can. I think it's kind of a nod to, and I think many people have been in this situation where you date a guy who you know is not like the best for you or right for you or he's got some problems but you feel like you can fix him and you can make him into a good person and I could see this song being about that um could it be about Joe I I guess but this just has the I don't know I I feel like it's about Maddie we'll see okay moving on the next track is LOML, AKA, which stands for love of my life. Um, the kids these days will text LOML, but that stands for love of my life. Interesting that she chose to use the acronym rather than love of my life, actually spelling it out. I think this song will be about Joe, probably about how he was love of her life. He's not anymore. I'm also trying to figure out like the, the spelling of it makes me think it's going to be more of like a upbeat song in a sense, but I could also see this being like a really emotional, intense song as well. And yeah, the acronym part of it is throwing me off. Like there's a, there, there's an intention. There's a reason for why she's doing that, but I just don't know why yet. And I'm also curious, will she sing? Will will the actual words in the song be love of my life or will she say LO? ML. I kind of doubt that, but we'll find out. All right. Finally, well, not finally, we still have a few more, but I can do it with a broken heart is the next track. Now, Taylor has talked about how when she goes on tour, she knows she has this obligation to go out on stage, even when she's not feeling her best, even when she's dealing with personal matters, when she's dealing with heartbreak or sadness, like she, she has to go out, go out on stage and still perform for her fans. And I think this is what that song is about. Like the fact that even though she is, she's probably going through some serious, serious heartbreak last year, dealing with this monumental breakup in her life. She still went out on tour. She still performed for these crowds. She still showed up for her fans. So I think that's what it's going to be about 
to some degree. Like the fact that she's she's still cont- continuing on with her life, even though she's dealing with something very, very difficult. Okay, just a few more left of the uh, original track list. Next song, The Smallest Man Who Ever Lived. I mean, that is, that's, that's going in. That's, that's tough. And I think that will be about Joe Allen. <laughs> oh, The Smallest Man Who Ever Lived. I mean, that is, that is hard. It, it's also like, if this is about Joe, she wrote so many love songs, beautiful songs about how much she loved him and how great he was over the course of their time together. And then if this is the ending of that, it's like, wow, you know, it makes, I don't know, it just puts love and relationships into perspective, how you can go from like loving someone so much to then also like hating them (laughs) and being very angry at them. Obviously we don't know that this is about Joe and we're all speculating here, but if it is, yikes. Um, The Alchemy is next. Another interesting song title, alchemy is a very unique word to use in a song. I have questions. I don't really have much else to say in terms of what it's about because again, it's like so so vague. It's not really giving us as much, but the fact that it's also at the end of the track listing makes me think it's going to be more like Taylor with perspective rather than like Taylor in a specific moment, if that makes sense. Okay, the final song of the official standard track list is Clara Bow. Now, Clara Bow was a silent film actress who then transitioned into like the talkies in the late 20s, okay? So she went from not having a voice to having a voice. And I wonder if there's some parallels there with what the song is going to be about like we we said this before i've said this before taylor for so many years like not being in the public eye being sort of locked away hidden not really speaking out or being like being herself and then now at this point in her life she is like she's just living her life she's doing what she wants she kind of like has her voice her personality back, all those types of things. So I wonder if that's, if there's going to be some parallels there, the, there but, but between Clara's professional life and her transition from silent films to talkies and then Taylor's life right now. It also could be, like I mentioned before, with um, the great American Dynasty song about how like she did a whole song about the story of the woman who owned her house. I could also see this being like a story about Clara's life, like kind of just like telling the story of her life in some way, shape or form and like maybe tying it back into her own life. We shall see. Okay, Taylor also announced she's revealed two bonus tracks. The first is called The Manuscript, which I can't really read into that title because manuscript. So like, is it like the story of her life? I don't know. The second one though, that she announced actually during a show in Australia is called The Bolter. And I think this has to do with the fact that, and a lot of Taylor Swift fans, we've already brought this up on social media, but the fact that Joe, in like any anytime Joe and Taylor were out and were going somewhere or, or were being paparazzi, Joe would like run would run from the car into the building or the building into the car. And he was just constantly, he never wanted to be photographed with her ever. He was bolting. And so I wonder if that is kind of what it has to do with, or if it has to do with like him bolting out of the relationship. Um, I don't know, interesting title curious to know more. I also think we're going to get some more bonus tracks over the next handful of weeks. I think she might announce Taylor loves different versions of albums. She loves putting out, you know, different vinyls with different songs. And I think, I think we'll get a couple more. I'm sure we'll have to break those down as well. But that is my breakdown of the Tortured Poets Department track list. I would love to know what you guys think in the comments, what you think these songs will be about. If you think they're going to going to be about a specific person, time in her life, 
all thoughts, feelings, concerns, please share them in the comments below. As always, subscribe to the channel, follow us on social media, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.